Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to the Inspired Conversations show. I'm your host, Visibility Catalyst and best-selling publisher, Linda Joy. And you know, whether it's through the pages of 12-year-old Aspire magazine, or through the multiple best-selling books written by women and for women, published by my boutique hybrid publishing house, inspiredlivingpublishing.com, or through the inspired conversations I hold on this show, I'm passionate about one thing, and that's about bringing women like you the insights, strategies, and inspiration to support you in living your best life, personally and professionally. So welcome. I'm so excited you stepped into this circle with me. Now, have you ever wondered, as I have, if you're clairvoyant, or if that gift is only open to some but not to you? And there's so many of, I've gone through it myself, wondering if I have that gift. And for clarity, the word means clear seeing, a phrase that thoroughly describes the gift. You see, clairvoyance is one of several mystical gifts and is available to everyone as today's guest the one and only Cindy Dale will be explaining. You know, I first discovered Cindy's work about 10 years ago. I can't believe I'm saying that. 10 years I've been following her. When I picked up the CD set, Advanced Chakra Wisdom, which had such a powerful impact on my spiritual and personal journey. So to say that I'm thrilled to have her here with us today, um, so let's bring her on. So Cindy is an internationally renowned author, speaker, healer, and business consultant. And get this, the author of nearly 25 internationally acclaimed books about my favorite topics, energy medicine, intuition, and spirituality. In addition, she has worked with over 65,000 clients and presented hundreds of seminars and workshops across the Americas and in Russia, England, Wales, Peru, Scotland, Morocco, Costa Rica, and the list goes on and on. Her most recent book is Awaken Clairvoyant Energy. Others include the bestseller, which I'm sure many of you have on your bookshelf, The Subtle Body, an encyclopedia of your energetic anatomy, as well as many others, including The Little Book of Chakras and The Subtle Energy Techniques. She also wrote Llewellyn's Complete Book of Chakras, which is the largest compendium of chakra knowledge ever produced. You know, overall, Cindy seeks to unify the world's most vital spiritual messages, encouraging and understanding in community among all peoples. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you, Linda Joy. I am so thrilled to be here. I sure sound like a busy person, don't I? <laughs> yes, you do. And I've been following you for many years, so I know you are. And i got to tell you, such the work you put out is such a gift to the world. It's been such a gift on my own spiritual journey. So I actually had a chance to thank you before we got on the air. So thank you again. Yo, thank you. I am honored to be on your show and to be, you know, in the in the listening devices of everybody who is listening to this inspirational show. Well, I am really passionate about bringing visionary women like you in front of my audience because I believe that the more we share our unique wisdom, that's where we're going to create this ripple of transformation, right, that ripples out. So that's why I'm excited to have you on the show today. So why don't we dive in because I know just from conversations with my friends that there's sometimes a lot of questions around this topic. So why don't we dive right in with what's clairvoyance? Well, I think you kicked our conversation off brilliantly by just defining the term, which means clear seeing, and that's what it is. You know, another sort of nutshell way to describe clairvoyance is to talk about it as psychic visioning, but that can really throw people off because they then always think that it involves seeing psychic images with their eyes or 
always getting pretty pictures inside of their heads, and it can involve that, you know, but it's really the receiving of any message, you could really say in almost any visual tone or medium that has a psychic message in it. So it's mystical. It's a way of receiving an imaging of some sort that provides us an inspirational internal message. So I'm glad you clarified that because I had a friend that said, but I never see anything. And I think she was trying to see whatever it was outside of her, like in the room with her. But is this an inner scene that just drops into your consciousnesses? Yes, it's usually an inner scene. Now, every so often, though, with a type of clairvoyance I call classical clairvoyance, that's the most well-known, you know, every so often any of us probably, all of us, can see something with our physical eyes. You know, you get a shadowy image or your, your eye catches on a book. You know, the book title is exactly the answer, you know, that matches the question you've got in your head. You know, so... It, so it doesn't have to be some auric field sight or you see a ghost in front of you. It can just be your eye catching even a billboard that is responding to something important. Most typically, though, there are images inside of your head. And classical clairvoyance, you see colored pictures. You might just see colors and have to go, well, why am I seeing purple in my head? What does that mean? You know, Or why am I seeing my music class teacher from sixth grade space? I mean, we have to work with the images is a little bit because they're constructed in our brain and with our optic nerves and in our imagination. But there's different ways of getting clairvoyant images too. Like we dream at night, we can get black and white pictures. And what I really like about my book, Awaken Clairvoyant Energy, is I help people construct clairvoyant images, say if they're more empathic. Let's say you're more of a feeler, a knower, you know, you kind of sense your way through life. Well, you can learn how to turn that way of knowing into an image in your head. It just takes a little bit of work. So anybody can be clairvoyant. It's just what's your style. So even the images you see in your dreams could fall, would fall under clairvoyance? They are clairvoyant. Okay, Absolutely. so some would say, oh, that's dream imaging. Go look that up in a dream book. But you're saying that's still a psyche in spiritual. That's still, that's still okay. our soul. Yeah, well, and the word psyche means soul. So these are ways our soul communicates with us, you know, or other souls communicate with us, and we receive different messages and impressions and revelations or warnings. That's all clairvoyance. See, it's really more mechanical than anything else. It's what are the apparatuses that are being used in the body to open you to a pictorial message. And so we use different chakras or energy centers. Obviously, the brain gets involved. Somehow, the optic nerves get involved. And so anyone can do it because everybody has those mechanics. And that's what I, why I was so excited to have you here today because I've always believed because when I was young, of course, I was like, I'm, I'm not psychic. I'm not clairvoyant. You know, I would have that story. But uh-huh. as I've developed my own gifts, I know when I hear friends say or I hear overhear conversations where they're like, that's not me. I don't, I, I'm not intuitive. I'm like, I giggle inside going, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you are. You just have to at first acknowledge that you, that you may be instead of telling yourself that you're not. And then start to trust it. The, the two questions people ask me the most, say, when I'm teaching a class are, how do I become clairvoyant? And then I have to say, you already are, but let's figure out how you're being that way and how else you can be clairvoyant. And the second is, well, how do I know what it means? You know, how do I trust it? And, you know, that's sort of, to me, a lifelong learning (laughs) because, I mean, I do this for a living and I still get pictures popping in my head when I'm working with a client and I scratch my head and I go, oh, that's just so embarrassing. I can't say that. I remember a client asking me, you know, where should I move? I'm interested in going someplace, you know, else geographically, blah, blah, blah. And all that popped in my head was a picture of a kumquat. Now, I don't actually know what a kumquat looks like. I'm Minnesotan. We don't eat kumquats. You know, we eat apples. (laughs) All right. So I knew it was a kumquat because one other way we can work with our clairvoyance is the word kumquat got typed underneath the picture. And you can imagine how stupid I felt that I'm looking at a picture of kumquat and somebody's asking me this really important question. It's all I could get, so I said it. 
And she was over the phone. She started laughing, and she said, that's the name of the village in this other country that my husband and I are thinking of moving to. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> now, imagine, though, right, if you had held that back for fear of of not trusting yourself, right, she right. wouldn't have got the message that was meant for her. Exactly. We've got to trust it. And my own internal intuition works sort of stubborn, just like I am. I mean, I'm not just Minnesotan, but I'm also Norwegian. All right. I'm all Norwegian. <laughs> oh, so boy. When I know it's really horrible. Well, I personally like it. But when I get an image, when I get a message, the guidance will not give me another picture until I say what it is I'm seeing. Even if I'm seeing, you know, somebody's asking about, you know, where did the cancer come from or, you know, something really, again, they're usually really vital questions. Maybe I see the Orion belt, you know, or maybe I see, you know, sort of like what I brought up already, my sixth grade music teacher. And I don't get anything else until I say it. It's always important. It always sooner or later means something. Um, but, you know, especially clairvoyant images that relate to the future frequently don't make any sense until the person's in the future. But you have to say them anyway, just like I believe when you're cultivating your clairvoyance, just trust it. it it's a good time, if nothing else. It's quite the adventure to just start trusting the images and, and working on your ways of receiving them. I'm so glad you brought that up because learning to trust it, which I did, is how I discovered my soul's purpose, how I was led to happiness. It's how I healed the stuff. Learning to trust that the process wasn't always pleasant because you, know, you have a lot of self-doubt, but I am so grateful that I choose to live my life this way. We're going to take our first break, Cindy, and when we come back, I want to talk about the types of clairvoyance because um, – if I remember correctly, the six types. And I yeah. think so many of us, we're like, is it just pictures? So we'll be back in a moment with Cindy Dale of cindydale.com. And that's Cindy with a Y. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Inspiration for a woman's soul. Aspire Magazine. Inspiring and supporting women on the path of self-discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribetoaspire.com. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.omtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America in your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. This is OTRFM. Part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy. And today we're talking about clairvoyance and tuition. And answering the question, yes, you are also clairvoyant. So what are the six types of clairvoyance um, that you can share with us today? 
I'm glad you asked. I love talking about clairvoyance. Um, one type is classical. It actually relates to what's called the sixth chakra, a subtle energy center in the brow. It's also called the third eye. That's the type where you get the pictures, either with your physical eyes or your dreaming. Something's in multicolor. You know, it's, it, you know, it's sort of like you're in the Wizard of Oz when you can see the green horses. A second type I call prophetic. It's actually uh, mechanically different than classical. Instead of using that third eye, you use what's called your seventh chakra. That's a little farther up in the top of the head, you know, connected to the pineal gland. When we're getting prophetic images, which are about what we're supposed to know, what we're supposed to know in order to create like a good outcome, a high outcome, we see pictures, but they're black, white, or gray. And, you know, this is always cool because when I bring that up, a lot of people go, wow, that's what I'm doing. I just thought I was all washed out. I didn't know what was happening. A third type I call empathic clairvoyance. It occurs when you turn a sense, a feeling, a knowing, a gut um, you know, kind of awareness about something into a vision. So you have to involve a, another body-based chakra, you know, like like your feeling center that's in your abdomen or your knowing center that's in your gut. And you have to do a little bit of transformation of that sensation so that you can get a picture. And, and a picture is worth a thousand words. However, the fourth type I call verbal clairvoyance. And it's when you read your answers. Um, it's really functional. It's very helpful. For me in particular, I am very visual classically. I get a lot of pretty pictures, but I don't always know what they mean. So I will ask the guys, you know, will you just type it out for me? <laughs> will, you just, will you just give me a sentence that I can say? So we, a lot of people have that gift innately or they can develop it. And two other styles really have more to do with how we apply our clairvoyance than anything else. We can apply it for healing, for actually releasing energy that we don't need, or helping others do the same, or for manifesting, you know, for bringing into ourselves or somebody else's life what they do need. Um, I don't even know if I put this in the book, but I feel like talking about it just for a second. With manifesting, typically we have to let go of some energy. You know, we have to release what's not working so there's space for something new. Uh, but I also like to teach people how to do what I call magnetizing, you know, which literally involves like writing psychically on your energetic field, like outside of you, what you want, you know, and letting it just come to you. The first time I did that, my son, who's a baseball player, had never hit anywhere toward 90 miles an hour as a pitcher. And I went from the many endless times he went to competition to earn a college scholarship. I mean, I just go to baseball all the time, even now that he's in college. And I was driving out there, and the guidance said, you know, you can just write what you want him to throw on his energy field, and he'll throw it. And I thought, well, that's clever. <laughs> <laughs> So I didn't want to, you know, aim too high because I didn't really know what I was doing. So I wrote 88 on his energy field, and you know what? He threw 88. <laughs> that is extraordinary, but I believe this all works. I just, it and does. I love that magnetizing. So thank you for is sharing that, cool? that process because that's fun, right? It's I only empowering. Do it when I'm told to do it. You know, I mean, it's not going to work if somebody has to, like, work through the issues. But when I get some guidance that says, oh, just magnetize this, you know, why go through all that pain? You know, I'm like, I'm right there with my, you know, Harold with the purple crayon. I'm right there with that. I love it. And what's the next um, clairvoyance type? Those two kind of are types of them. So that gets us to six when we add the healing and the manifesting. So we've got classical, we've got prophetic, we've got empathetic, we've got verbal, we've got healing and manifesting. And then there's probably more to invent as we go, too. So manifesting was number six. That's now, number six. Mm -hmm. So clairvoyance is the type that always comes with pictures. Now, I receive yeah. knowings. Yeah. Right, strong. But then sometimes, like Aspire Magazine, and I never knew this till this conversation, Aspire Magazine, so she's 12, I call her she, she's 12 years old. Now I'm like, I'm in awe because, do you know for three months, I kept receiving the vision of a magazine down to the hand-drawn logo. 
And I kept going, why am I dreaming about the cover of a magazine? It was always the same cover over and over. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I can't sleep. Waking me up and with bright color, stones, what do you call it when you pile those pretty beach stones, you know, you know, in a yeah, pile, right? I know what you're talking about. Yeah, That's what Hermes, I kept seeing. Like Hermes stone. Yeah, uh-huh. I kept seeing it. Well, it, at the third month, it was affecting my sleep. And I remember, remember the old Microsoft publisher? Yeah. I said, exactly. I didn't have a lot of, you know, experience with it. I go, maybe if I take this out of my freaking head. Well, I did. Ooh. I got up one night and I put it up on my bulletin board. I said, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with you, but just leave me the heck alone. <laughs> Three weeks later, a graphic designer walked in my life for my other business, and I looked up at that. She was uh, helping me make business cards. I looked up, and I said, hey, have you ever done a magazine? Now, why am I even saying this to her? I already had another business, had just closed a business of 11 years. She said, no, I'm just starting my, my, you know, my business. I said, I think I'm being led. You want to give it a shot? That was it. That was well, my first sign. But see, I didn't tie it in at the time to clairvoyance or knowing and it's only happened three times where I received clear visual pictures and I'll tell you they are very um persistent when I do well, get them they're persistent them. they're pictures of the future but the future hasn't happened yet and that's what occurs when we're manifesting you know it's a future it's almost like a prophetic future it's like you need to do this you're going to get bugged whether it's by your future self, spirit, um, you know, a whole community of saints, you know, who knows who's in on these plans? You, you know, I mean, you know, probably several committees, you know, are like you went through. They bother you. They give you the image. And you're really sort of tricked into or forced into doing it. I love that you thought, okay, now this can stop because I gave life to it. And it's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually what I felt, too. I said, okay, now can I go to sleep? That's- right, right. And right. and it's funny because I never, I for some reason I was one of those way back then that thought clairvoyance meant seeing it outside of myself, not in a dream. Now I understand it all differently, but it's only been three times where I receive clear images like that. I receive knowings, and I follow my intuition. My whole business is run by my intuition, not by my business plan. Much to the chagrin of you know the <laughs> those who like business. Plans. I haven't had one in 25 years, and it serves me well. Thank you. So, so even though those three occurrences happened, would you still? Would I still say I'm clairvoyant, even though I don't typically see that way? I receive strong knowings and just, or is oh, it different absolutely. types? Oh yes, absolutely. You know, we have. You know, there's clear empathy. You know, which are the knowings, the sensing, and there's many, many different types of empathy. Everybody is mainly empathic, even if they're not aware of it. You know, where you get physical sensations in the body or you pick up on people's pain or you know their feelings or you get, you know, kind of cognitive understandings or those sort of awarenesses. Those to me are sort of spiritual awarenesses. Most of the mystical gifts fall under the category of empathy. Then there's clear audience, which is verbal, which can also include, you know, understanding through reading something or, you know, kind of words popping in your head or a motto, you know, kind of, you know, coming up to you and then you just repeat it like a mantra and it's really important. But clairvoyant, you are clairvoyant if you get any imagings at all. Okay. Absolutely. Like in my professional world, I am mainly clairvoyant. And then secondarily, I'm clairaudient and I just get messages, you know, and then thirdly, I'm empathic. In my everyday life, Linda Joy, I'm empathic. I steer myself the way you're talking, like, what do I feel like doing or what, what, what seems to be the right thing or what's right in this situation? And what happens for me is those knowings come in and sometimes I'll just sit with it and going, now, I just absolutely know I need a new office space. I can sense it, you know, and then I kind of turn it over and I say, you know, I'd like more guidance over the next three days about what that means. What The first time I did that, I had my therapist actually, who's also a friend, you know, bring up at our session. She goes, you know, do you want to sublet an office here? <laughs> Which is sort of clear audience because somebody said something you know and more recently I was rethinking you know I think I'm going to need a new space at some point I got an image of my chiropractor and I'm like why would I ever office at my chiropractors well she brought it up 
she brought it up and she said, you know, in a few years, if you ever need a space, you know, you can use my front room. And I thought, well, I'm all lined up. So these gifts work together, too. And we get the data the way we're both, you know, we're supposed to receive it and in a way that's meaningful to us. See, I give my guides the job, you know, of getting through to me. I say, you know what, you know who I am. I'm hard headed. You know, I can ignore things, you know, until the cows come home and I don't even have any cows. So I could ignore things forever. And I just say, get the message across. You know, if you need a stranger talking to me, I call that clear audience. Do it. If you need to get a picture in my head, do it. Um, you know, I'll give you a fun example of clairvoyance. I was taking the, the broad side of the buses and putting, you know, big statements and underneath saying God says. Next to us pulls this huge bus in big words that says, I understand, period. And underneath it, it says, God says. Oh, that's my God. Now, th- all right. So that's when – then I'm understanding it even on a deeper level now. So yeah. if I'm at a bookstore, because I said that third time, it wasn't a dream. A book – I was on vacation. A book jumped off the freaking shelf. <laughs> so I put it back because I, I wasn't looking there. But I walked away, grabbed another book, but something deep within said – Linda, that book just jumped off the bookshelf. There was nobody there. Go get that book. So I did. I get to the register. The lady goes, where did you get that book? So I said, I know you're going to think I'm nuts, but it jumped off. And she goes, do you know there's been a woman coming in here for six months? We knew we had that in stock. And she wanted that book. And she said, but if it jumped out after we, all our employees looked for that book, it's meant for you. So, and guess what the, guess what the, I don't remember the author, but I'll never forget the name. What's the when, name? When you hear the same message three times, you better listen. <laughs> that book, that's when I started noticing things. So with that, the book landed there for me. Is that clairvoyance? That is, because it's a book and it's visual, it's clairvoyance. Okay. Because it also has words. Yes. It's also clairaudience. So these start to, they're like potions that mix together. Sometimes something's clearly clairvoyance. If you just saw the book, right, <laughs> that would just be clairvoyance, but it's got words in it. You know, and I would say it's probably also empathic or kinesthetic because it fell. It moved. So you got the, you got the, the holy trinity coming at you there. Well, that day I was like walking out and like, I'm like, what just happened? Because I wasn't where I am now on my spiritual path. So let's let's go to our next break, Cindy, because I'm like, I must take these breaks, but I don't want to. <laughs> um, and we'll be back in a moment with Cindy Dale of CindyDale.com. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Experience a homecoming to your heart. In the foreword of Dr. Deborah Rebel's new book, Being Love, How loving yourself creates ripples of transformation in your relationships and the world. Marcy Shimoff shares, The answer to our inner longing isn't finding love, it's being love. The practices that Dr. Deborah presents in Being Love are keys to opening your heart and receiving your divine birthright as a physical manifestation of love. Her techniques developed over years of successful private practice with her clients and from her extensive training in multiple disciplines, are accessible, compassionate, and effective. Her message is powerful, and if you allow it, will change your whole life. Order your copy of Being Love today at beinglovebook.com and receive over 45 transformational gifts. Being Love is brought to you by Inspired Living Publishing. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi everyone, this is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, 
free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Hi, you're listening to Inspired Conversations. With me today is the one and only Cindy Dale, internationally renowned author, speaker, healer, and business consultant, and author of the, her most recent book, Awaken Clairvoyant Energy, which is available now. You can visit cindydale.com, at, and that's Cindy with a Y. So, Cindy, you were talking earlier about the chakras. So yeah. how do these six styles that you talked about, and I know you touched on one, like classical is third eye, prophetic is the seventh chakra. So does every type relate to an individual chakra or multiple chakras? Uh, you know, some of them relate to specific chakras and others, depending on the style, you know, could be a mix of chakras or a specific. So, yeah, classical, which has to do with getting color images or seeing with your physical eyes, that's six chakra, that's the third eye, that's the pituitary gland. You know, that's the one that's really famous, especially amongst women, you know, like the Delphi oracles or there's some place in Egypt called the Siwa Oracle, you know, who are women, you know, who used to, you know, get images and visions and predict and see, you know, and warn people about the future. Typically, they were getting classical images. They were futuristic. They don't have to be, but they were color-based. So that's sixth chakra. Prophetic, which is black and white and gray, is seventh chakra. That's the pineal gland. When you're working with the verbal, that's fifth chakra. That's in the throat. So you're you're adding, it's like a little salt and pepper. You know, you're typically with the verbal working with either classical or prophetic, so sixth and seventh, and you're adding in the fifth chakra because you're adding either the written word inside of your head or you're going to see a written word, you know, in a visual way, you know, or words get added to the picture somehow. And so you're working with the fifth chakra there. When you're doing the empathy, the other chakras by and large, I work with a 12-chakra system, so it's even more complicated. We don't need to do that. Um, but you'll be mixing either classical or prophetic with at least one of the empathic chakras. So let's say you feel jolted. You, like, you feel like you just got in a car accident and nothing happened. Physical is first chakra. It's in the hips. You just picked up a psychic message empathically that's very body based, if you then bring that sensation into, say, your classical chakra, you may get an image of what either just happened, could be happening, you know, or maybe will happen to somebody else or to yourself. So when you're dealing with empathy, you're mixing chakras, but you'll always have a chakra, you know, involved that's empathic. Um, healing also usually works with the heart because healing is centered in the heart. Um, and, you know, manifesting can be done any number of ways, you know, but or if it's seeing futures, you know, or you're just picturing what you want to draw to you, typically you're pretty clean using the the third eye or the sixth chakra. So it really can be like playing a piano, you know, and a real mix of your different subtle organs to be clairvoyant. Because a lot of your work involves, you do a lot of work with the chakras. I do. And, you know, it's funny because I never thought I'd grow up to be the chakra queen. <laughs> and right, like you talked about that 1,200-page book that I wrote that's the biggest ever written. I did not strive to write 1,200 books, you know, 1,200 pages in a book. It just sort of happened. Um, but, you know, the chakra is a, it's a beautiful system. It's, it's systematized. It's organized. It explains ourselves to ourselves. You can do problem-solving, diagnosing, uh, 
uh, you know, you can do almost anything with the chakras, and they're really worldwide. They're not called chakras in every culture, but nearly every culture I've studied has had some version of the subtle organs, you know, and used them, you know, physically, psychologically, but certainly as sort of uh, staircases, you know, or, or rungs on the ladder to become more and more the people that we really are. So I think it's just a really beautiful, intact uh, system, you know, to become more of who we are. It's like a spiritual guidance system, right? And totally. when, when they're all aligned and clean and, and clear, everything's flowing well to your divine source. That's just what I feel in my own that's body. That's what they are. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And they're tools. They're vehicles, they're vessels, and they're tools. You don't have to know that much either. I mean, obviously, I'm enamored, you know, of the various chakra systems from around the world. You can learn the basics. Learn the seven in-body basics. You can get that anywhere on the Internet. Learn the basic colors, a word associated with each, and that's a significant tool. Yeah, and it's empowering, right? To, uh, for me, yeah. it was anyway. Yeah, because they're your chakras. Yeah, and, and, and it's almost you like... your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can almost feel it. Once you just, and, and I'm not um, schooled as you are in them, it's just more for me intuitive. I'm like, oh, my hips are bothering me. What's going on? Right. You know? So right. I don't automatically go into the the Western world thinking of, oh, your hips are bothering me because you carried, you know, 12 bins yesterday or whatever the story may be. <laughs> I, I I do not ignore the spiritual part. I don't either. You know, like if my heart gets tight, I go, wow, that's my fourth chakra. It's in the heart area. That's about love. What's going on? You know, what's challenging me? Am I tight with love? Am I not taking it in? Really simple questions can arise with a really basic knowledge of the chakras. Yeah, I find it I find it fascinating, but also empowering. Right, that right within yes. our body we were gifted, energetic yes. body. We were gifted yes. with this like roadmap. It is a roadmap, and you know it's fantastic to go to a physician or a, a healer, you know, or get help from the outside. Um, but they may not really pick up on what's going on with us, not in a clear, clean way. And like you're saying, there's so many different systems. You know, there's many times that I know whatever's going on with my body, it is like emotional or it is spiritual. Why would I go to a doctor? Because they're not going to tell me, you know, you're not loving yourself or you're holding your mother's anger. So it is empowering because, you know, we can be responsive or responsible to what's happening inside of us or around us. It's so true. And and even recently, in fact, about a week ago, I got hit really fast with what the world would say was, oh, you got the flu. Mm -hmm. Sudden, you know, high fever, body aches, no other symptoms. But I said, whoa, thank you for the purging. Because I'm stepping into new levels in my life, business-wise, putting the house on the market. I've been doing a lot of purging with the house, right? I immediately knew, oh, so you're purging your outer you know, clearing the new house, um, the old home to make room for the new, all the, the purging that comes with moving, stepping into a new level of business. I, yeah. I intuitively knew, even though my honey's like, you got to get the house, well, it's 102. And I'm like, <laughs> I giggled. I go, oh, no, I'm fine. Because my intuition said, oh, no, you're just going through a spiritual clearing so the inside matches the outside. That's right. what I heard. And we, yes, and we, and we know, and then we know what to do, and we can support ourselves, love ourselves. We certainly don't need to shame ourselves. There was uh, about six months ago, I have two big dogs, and they're just delightful. I mean, they're just like, like supersonic, you know, spiritual angel kids, and they're a lot like kids too. Um, but for, for three or four days, they just took turns throwing up. And so my friend, of course, said to me, so you may want to see what they're throwing up for you. <laughs> like, what do you need to purge, Cindy? What do you need to let go of? What do you need to stop eating? You know, and as soon as I figured it out, it was, I hate to say it, a little bit too much chocolate. I'm just going to say it was <laughs> a, little, a little too much because I really do like my chocolate. You know, I cleaned it up. I said, you know, I'm just escaping some emotions I have to deal with. It's turning my stomach. They're acting it out. Everything cleared up. You know, you know, they were fine. They got well. So there's a wonderful mirroring that can happen in the world with us, too, as soon as we're really aware that we're part and parcel of the environment around us. And our chakras, you know, they 
they are on the outside of our body, not just inside. They're inside, but each opens to or creates a different field, an auric field, you know, around our body. So they interface with the world, decide what we're going to take in, decide what we're going to keep out, you know, communicate messages for us to the world. You know, and sometimes they bring in energy that's not our own because we've got, you know, so old programs that set us up for that. Um, you know, so so the more we learn about how we are as energetic beings, the more power we have to making decisions about what suits us and what doesn't, too. Exactly. And I, I, I'm in so enjoying this conversation. We're going to take our last break. And when we come back, I would love to talk about how we can develop our ability to be more clairvoyant. And I'll be back in a moment with today's guest, Cindy Dale of CindyDale.com. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Isn't it time for you to listen to your own internal compass, your intuition, rather than listening to all those around you? When you learn how to navigate using your intuition, you'll discover how to hear your soul's whispers so you live a life of purpose, joy, and abundance. Soulwise Living Mentor, Laura Clark, provides women with the empowering tools and support to help them tame their inner critic, calm their emotions, and ground themselves so they can hear, trust, and act upon their inner guidance. If you're ready to awaken your intuition, visit soulwiseliving.com to schedule a complimentary sacred soul chat, read Laura's inspiring blog posts, and discover an array of free supportive resources. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Me, a cat, moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy. And with me today is Cindy Dale. And we're talking about clairvoyance, the chakras, intuition, and how in this segment we're going to talk about how you can develop your ability to be more clairvoyant. So do you have some tips and strategies if we want to start practicing? Is it, would that even be the word, practicing, to be I clairvoyant? I think it is practicing. I still practice, and I've been doing this for a couple decades professionally, and I still practice. I still give myself little tasks and try new things and see if I can see colors that are from other planets. So I do believe, like anything, we have an innate ability, and then we practice it. We fine-tune it. We play with it. So to some extent, you know, it's like get a sense of if you're naturally more classical, prophetic, you know, so you see colors, um, you get black and whitish images, you're more empathic, you're more of a knower, sensor, feeler, and you want to turn that into pictures. You know, if you're more verbal, so you want to add that to pictures, you know, if you're like a big heart, you know, and you want to apply it for healing, uh, you know, if you want to do it for manifesting, you know, or if you just get senses and pictures of the future. So get a sense of what's most natural and what you first want to more develop. I teach, and it's in my book, Awaken Clairvoyant Energy, two super easy techniques that help you feel safe. And as soon as you feel safe mystically, you know what? Your gifts will advance like nobody's business. One is spirit to spirit. It's really easy. Before I'm going to meditate or open for an image for myself or I want to get a dream at night or I want to understand a picture I got or I want to work with a client or whatever it is, um, I affirm my spirit, which is my essential self. 
I affirm the any other spirits involved, which could include my guides who could help me. And I affirm the greater spirit, whatever word you want to use. And I then turn the process over to the greater spirit. And, you know, what happens is you get so comfortable with the process, you know, that if you're not used to getting a lot of pictures, you'll probably start to get more images. You know, if you're a little nervous or have self-doubt, that starts to get taken care of because your agenda or your own, you know, personality isn't in charge of a process. And it just becomes much more natural. And when we're more relaxed, guess what? We get more clairvoyant pictures of all kinds of sorts. The second technique I like to teach people is a doing because a lot of people I work with don't want to get pictures. Maybe they used to, they stopped, or they're scared to do it of any sort because they don't want to see something that's scary. And it is sort of scary. You don't want to see what's going to maybe happen to your child if it's dangerous, or you don't want to predict the next, um, you know, trade center coming down, you know, and that can happen with clairvoyance is we can get real insights and revelation, whether it's into somebody's personality or events that we can feel very powerless about. So I teach people that coming off of spirit are streams of grace. To me, grace is love in motion. You don't have to know what they are. You don't have to picture them. They're always available. I think this is what all the famous healers and manifestors have been able to use in whatever way they did so across time. They can be summoned by any of us. So if I see an, you know, an image of my child getting sick, I ask for streams of grace to go to my child. If I get a picture that scares me, I ask for streams of grace to come to me, you know, or any and all concerned in that imaging, you know, so that it's lifted to the light, so that it's lifted to the highest uh, outcome or process. And it, that technique has made such a difference for me. You know, like like if I'm shopping at Target and I just know that this kid is being abused, you know, you can't call the police if you just see a child in a cart. You can't do it. You just can't do it. You know, but I'm getting an image or a feeling or a sense that there's something wrong there. I, I do spirit to spirit really clearly. I give it to spirit. I ask for streams of grace to go to the child, to go to all concerned, you know, so that I'm being involved in a way that keeps me out of it, but brings the higher authority into the situation. So I'd say use those techniques however and whenever you want to. Apply them to your clairvoyant development because, honest to gosh, your style or styles will just pop open with tools like that. And I really resonate with the, the spirit team. I, I call mine um, divine support team. Like, you know, like even if I'm... Um, Stuck. You know, sometimes you need a little more focus or creativity. Yeah. I know I have someone on my team that gives me that creative energy, and I'll say, okay, you know, send me what I need. Exactly. And it works every time. And that work. resonates because I truly believe that we do have a divine support team or spirit support team that that is always there, but it's they're waiting for us to call. You have to ask. And sometimes uh, yeah. you don't have to know what to ask for. You can just say help. <laughs> yeah. And it, it works. And it's so powerful. Now, what do you do personally in our last few moments? What do you do personally after all of these years to continue developing your clairvoyant ability? I use spirit to spirit for almost everything, not okay. compulsively. But when I get up in the morning, you know, I use spirit to spirit and I say, you know what, whatever it is I need to learn, however I need to learn or grow in my capability, show me today what to do, how to respond, how to serve and how to be. So I do that every morning. And then I do fun little things. Like I may go, which grocery store should I go to? I want a picture of that because I think they're like muscles and you have to use them. And so I'll get a picture of which grocery store to go to. Or if I don't know what to eat for dinner, I'll just say, okay, spirit, you know, or my guides or my inner spirit or whatever, you know, what would be healthy for me to eat? I may not always like the picture that comes in because it might be really, really healthy, but I go with it. And so I keep using the imaging for myself to help myself make effective decisions, you know, and it keeps me from getting rusty, especially in my personal life. 
And I love it. it it's like anything else, right? If we want to yeah. hone it and get good at it, we have to practice. But I like how you make it fun, too. I think we have to have fun with this. I mean, come on. Yeah, <laughs> it life's too enough too seriousness. It, uh-huh. it definitely does. Now, your new book is um, out now, and it's Awaken Clairvoyant Energy. What can, uh-huh. we, what can we expect? It will describe the six forms of clairvoyance. It's going to ask the most pertinent questions, like what do you do if you get a future picture? You know, I'll say, hey, there's possibilities, probabilities, destiny points. You know, it's really going to get you into the subject because it's hard for us, any of us, to develop an ability unless we know what it is, we know how it works, you know, and we know the different styles of it. And it's also going to give you specific tools, you know, and exercises on how to develop each of those abilities and gifts. So it's really sort of like a working book. I don't want to call it a workbook because it's not a workbook, but it's like a working book. You know, you can you can read just a section of it and go, you know, I just want to understand healing or I just want to know how to do the dreaming. Um, and you can pick and choose amongst the different ideas, but it will explain the gift and show you how to develop each of the styles. Ooh, so everyone, if you uh, really want to dive deeper, grab a copy of a book, Awaking Clairvoyant Energy. I have already done so. And um, Cindy will be in the June-July issue of Aspire Magazine, so be sure to grab your digital copy and your free subscription at subscribe to aspire.com so you don't miss it. Cindy, it's been a joy and a pleasure to have you here. Um, as I said at the beginning... I picked up your CD set, Advanced Chakra Wisdom, 10 years ago. I think it was from Sounds True, if I remember correctly. It was correct. from Sounds True. I love it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And um, it just was really, you were my first teacher on the chakras. Oh, and I was that like, makes me feel really good. Yeah. I was like, Ian, I, I'm, everyone, I just got to share this with you. I shared it with Cindy before we came on the air. You know how you know, when you're moving, you purge a lot of things, right? And I've purged my bookshelves, and I am a book geek, and my product shelves over the years. And I am putting a house on the market in two weeks, and we start building next door. Cindy's CD set has made 10 years of cuts, right? And it's just one I can't give up because it made such an impact in my life. So... Do yourself a favor. Order her most recent book, Awaken Clairvoyant Energy, while you're on her website at cindydale.com. Again, Cindy with a Y. Check out everything else she has going on. She's an extraordinary teacher, and she's such a light keeper. So thank you again, Cindy, for being here. It's my honor. Thank you, Linda Joy. Oh, you're welcome. And I hope to see all of you every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Inspired Conversation Show. And until next time, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.